Hi, my name is Keith, and I'm known as a Florida Stone Man. And today I'm going to be talking to you all about meditation. And I've made videos about meditation before, but I'm actually going to go in depth about what true meditation is and the problems of why a lot of people are not able to meditate. Let me start off by just saying this. I have my own meditation journey and how I actually learned how to meditate with the help of my angels and guides. But one thing I have found is that the information online about meditation really overcomplicates meditation and it makes it something that you guys or a lot of you guys feel like you're unable to obtain or even if you know how to actually obtain proper meditation. What does this mean? This is a really complex and very simple subject, but I'm going to talk about my meditation journey and the meditation journey of others because I help people learn how to properly meditate. Uh, let me wait. Let me start off with some of the information online. Like uh, there's guided meditations, which are very good. Guided meditations are very, very good if it's the right guided meditation. Some of them are very fluff oriented, but find a good guided meditation on YouTube just to get a feel. But even outside the guided meditations, when you're trying to meditate without a guided meditation, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of lost. I'm trying to meditate by myself. That's that can be an issue if you don't have a guided meditation and you don't want to rely on guided meditations. Now, as a spiritualist who meditates every single day, and I meditate at least for 30 minutes a day, uh, you can do more than 30 minutes a day. You can do 45 minutes a day, but I would recommend the bare minimum you guys should do a day is 30 minutes. If you would like an in-depth meditation, then you can do an hour. I remember back then I used to meditate for three hours at a time, and it just... You really have to observe your intentions in meditation, observe what you're doing in meditation, observe who you're connecting with, observe what about, I mean, just, you have to really, what are you doing during the meditation? What are you looking to explore? Are you going into the spiritual realm? Are you astral traveling? Are you actually doing a half astral travel meditation? It could be several different things, but number one, it starts with your intention. With meditation, I highly recommend you guys come up with a form of prayer and t by talking to God. Uh, it, does, it, just, it could be a personal prayer. It could be Lord's Prayer. But make sure when it comes to meditation that you have an opening and that you have a closing. Every single practice has their different way of meditating. But when it comes to meditation, I you need to be doing it. You ha okay, you don't need to, but it's highly suggested that you do it around the same time every single day. If you have ancestors and guides uh, who want to tag along with your meditation, because when it comes to your meditation and you, you're, let's just say you meditate at five o'clock every single day, exactly at five, they put it in their schedule in the spiritual room as well to meditate with you. And they actually do certain things during meditation. They wait the entire day until the next day for you to meditate and to really present something new. And, uh, so you'll be seeing numbers in your third eye. You'll be seeing, and when you meditate with angels, like actual angels, you'll see some cool things. You'll see some very interesting things. So I'll talk about my meditation journey. So basically, I started off meditating, and I was doing guided meditations. I was doing hour-long meditations, a few hour-long meditations. And it was kind of strange because I realized that online doesn't really talk about what achieving true meditation is. What is achieving true meditation? It says closing your eyes uh, and... Let me start off with, a lot of you guys will close your eyes, they'll be like, um, like, or just, I'm not saying you're oming, but uh, you're like not really sure what to do, you feel kind of awkward, you're not really, sh you don't really feel anything, or you don't really think you feel anything, you're expecting more, you're getting frustrated, and then you stop meditating. It happens to most of you. Or sometimes you guys will get really frustrated, and not, like, because meditation, is, after three months of meditating, you'll unlock something new, but you have to do it consistently every single day. So the first three months about meditation is all about consistency. So you'll start meditation with some form of prayer, like, okay, I invite and say who you say who you want to invite in, or certain things will invite themselves into your meditation, and they could be fallen angels. So you better you better be very careful of that. Certain things that are very friendly, because they're super super friendly de demonic entities, and they're super friendly, and they just want to slide in your meditation and just kind of join you, but. You state very clearly, if you're not a being of light, I don't care if you're friendly, if you're not a being of light, stay out. There's a certain spiritual law that said, it basically says and commands that who you invite in 
will come in or who you don't let who you make sure to not come in is not going to be allowed to come in your gatekeeper guides because uh, there's they're when working with angels there's different uh, a gatekeeper is basically a it could be a spirit or an angel that lets things come closer to you sometimes some of them don't let many things come close to you at all unless you really want to talk to them such as other angels but it really depends like if, if you want to know who your guides are check, get an appointment with if eve the medium an actual medium and she'll tell you who your guides are she'll work with you and she does readings on her website and on her youtube channel like she's an accurate medium there's not many of those there's not many mediums of light most of them are just flat out corrupted a lot, what happens to a lot of mediums is that they they get presented a little tiny bit of darkness and power and they just it eats them it eats them she's pure light and she's gonna help you meet your actual guides how i met my guides is persistence i was viciously persistent i met all of my guides by being viciously persistent and the thing is um i have a lot of friends who are mediums i have and for my friends who are mediums they don't consider themselves mediums which is kind of funny they just consider themselves normal pe normal people like hey i just i talk to angels okay me too great and then other people are like oh can i have a reading I'm like go to give the medium for an accurate reading because people reading other people you can't be you you, re you really cannot just be anyone reading people out here people will do that on TikTok or instagram and you're gonna get yourself energetically robbed with just random readers who don't know what they're doing especially if they're not cleansing between readings and etc but I'm, i i made a whole different video about that this is back to the topic of meditation you can meet your guides during when you're meditating but the way you start off is by claiming that you're you would like to meet angels you would like to meet your ascended ancestors or ancestors who are doing good you don't want any ancestor in your in your meditation space if that ancestor died of like an overdose or had some really kind of bad trauma or they were just a really rotten person and they're showing up in your meditation you better believe they haven't really changed in the afterlife ancestors who are really good such as like let's just say your grandmother was a really good person she went to church she helped a lot of people in the afterlife she's upgrading there's upgrades that go for i call those ascended ancestors ancestors who have made it to the afterlife and they're moving up like they're getting educated on certain dynamics they're they're helping your, the rest of your family members and they're moving up in vibration to the point where if you've had dreams about them they look really young in the dreams they look amazing in the dreams it's like i've never seen you look this good in life how do you look this good in the afterlife it's because that ancestor has moved up they've ascended i have a grandmother like that in the afterlife and it's pretty cool to see because it's not very common like uh a lot of people will go to heaven a lot of people will i mean a lot of not a lot of people will go to heaven and a lot of people will go to hell or just come back and then i mean a lot of this world's not doing good or doesn't even know how to do good sometimes it's not their fault etc that's with god it's not with yeah that's a different topic on its own but first off with meditation make sure you're claiming your intention do a prayer do some kind of do some kind of ritual where you ring a bell you uh you can burn rosemary or frankincense and myrrh is very good you can do set up something get a book a journal and be like okay this time every day i do this this opening when i'm done with the meditation i close out i say thank you to god okay great okay that's how you properly set up a starting and an end point to the meditation schedule plus opening and closing now when you meditate what does that consist of this is the toughest part for people because and actually the first three months in meditation should be the toughest part for you guys because it's awkward it's new it's like going to the gym it's like okay this is a new muscle i don't know what's going on it's really painful and it's, uh, it's kind of awkward it's kind of... okay it's okay it's okay but when it comes to meditating it's okay to be awkward the first few months you're gonna get a feel for it and you're gonna notice there's the same there's the same specific feeling over and over after around three months in your meditation point sometimes it takes you guys six months it's okay as long as you're consistent if you're doing every single day at the same time you're going to see some kind of different things happening in your meditation i highly recommend you wear crystals when you meditate because they clean the energies and they open you up to a lot more especially if you wear a bunch of crystals at once which i do myself you're going to unlock different things in meditation very quickly you're going to open gifts that people haven't even imagined let's just say that uh and certain crystals really do help that like there are some crystals out there and i share these with some people who 
Uh, I trust there are some crystals that blast your gifts open. Like, wide open. Now, back to the topic of meditation, because there's so many different things to talk about when it comes to the topics of meditation. Now that you've come up with a opening and closing, now that you're being consistent, because time is currency on this in the spiritual realm. You're paying with your time. You're literally... Energy, I mean, light is energy. And you're giving your light to meditation. Okay. You're paying your time when you meditate. So you're giving your time. So you can choose to talk to your guardian angel. And I highly recommend this. Uh, some people like to meditate with... Uh, God and then their guardian angel. Some, everyone's different. Of course, in meditation, I meditate with God. Some people will just focus on God and the energies of God. That's good. Uh, I do that plus my guardian angel, my other angels, uh, different angels in the room. I don't really work with spirits like that unless they're super, uh, unless they're uh, very moved up spirit towards uh, like ancestors, which I'll, I might teach in another video. You can help kind of level up certain ancestors especially by helping them to help other people in your family i don't even i don't know if i should teach that as a topic but uh because i don't really teach about spirits i teach about angels like actual angels there's not many people teaching about actual angels uh because not many people know how people don't believe that they can really contact angels they're very easy to contact all it takes is belief and most people are not even they don't believe in angels they don't believe in that they're able to talk to angels because they're so high up in the dimension yeah, they're, they're, you're able to talk to them, but you have to believe. You have to ask God. You're not going to talk. You are not going to get very far with an angel if you're not talking to God. They will point you straight to God. They'll be like, okay, you can talk to me, but you gotta, you have to acknowledge God. You're not get. You're not. This is this because the angels will be your, the guardian angel will be your, one of your best friends. But you have to talk to God before your guardian angel. God made the angels. Angels are the helpers to humanity. They're beautiful beings of light that are just willing to help you. Now, when you're meditating, and my angels help me help a lot of people. The video topics I have, the information on crystals, it's because I have amazing guides to be able to help and really save many, many people in this spiritual war that we're in. Now, back to the topic of meditation. So you're meditating. You've come up with, you've came up with consistency. I just taught that time. Light is energy, and energy is currency in the spiritual realm. Make clear who you'd, who you'd like to meditate on, because if you're just meditating to meditate, that's okay. You might find what you connect to during the meditation, but it's good to have something to connect to during the meditation. Now, I taught about this before. Most of you have weak guardian angels. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes guardian angels in this life will start off very weak, like extremely weak. Because there's something, there's a balance between here and the firmament where the angel is connecting to you, but you don't give your angel much attention or time or light. And these things are not earthly. They're not. There's nothing earthly about an angel. So they're not going to be as attached to this realm as a spirit is. So sometimes when people go to talk to angels, they'll talk to spirits first because they, ex I mean, their ego, or not ego, they're, if you're trying to rush an angel and talking to you, you better get... Angels have lifetimes to wait. They have lifetimes to wait. They will wait three lifetimes for you to get yourself right. So you calm yourself down, you talk to the angel with respect, and you fully expect for the angel to talk to you after asking God to connect to your angel because you're not going around God. No one goes around God. Now, and I've, I've, ta I've seen people which... Ironically, those people are connecting to not angels, like ex-angels. People are like, oh, I don't have to talk to God. I don't have to believe in God to connect to angels. And, and the people are connecting to fallen angels and then getting fooled by trickster spirits. Yeah, fallen angels and trickster spirits will farm your energy because of that because they know you're... They love taking advantage of foolish people. So when you go into meditation, keep your intention very pure. You're going to attract exactly what you are. If you're someone who lies and someone who gossips and someone who causes trouble, you're attracting entities who are helping you do that. They're helping you accomplish that. But if you're someone out here doing good, you're being nice to people, you're you're just a light. You're just being a light. Sometimes my angels will tell me, this person's a light. What does that mean? This means that this person shines. All they have to do is shine. And that's their intention. Their intention is being put off in doing goodness. And those people will have a lot like a lot better luck working with angels because your intention is everything in the astral realm. If you ever seen someone who goes into the astral realm and astral travels, 
and they're dark, they come back with some serious dark, just really bad baggage. Really bad baggage. And it shows. Like, those people have a whole bunch of stuff happen to them, and they're like, ooh, I'm spiritually growing. There is worms moving under my skin after I astral traveled. What is this? Like, oh, false pregnancy. I mean, there's some crazy... There are some crazy things that happens when dark people go into the astral realm and come back. I'm not going to share many stories on there. Maybe I said too much already, but uh, when dark people go into the astral realm, you're stripped naked into your spiritual form and everything else is looking at you like, hey, you're like me. And they come back with you because you get to see them and they get to see you. That's why a lot of your guides don't let you astral travel until you get your intention right. A lot of you have tried to astral travel, but your intention is not fully pure. So your guides will like do the push. They'll be like, like, uh-uh, uh-uh. So you'll feel, you'll feel headaches or you'll feel like sickness or like vomiting when you keep trying to astral travel because your guides, when you start coming out of your physical form, they'll be like this. They'll literally do this. Like sometimes your, your angels and guides will give you like a push and it's like, what was that for? And it's like, so, so your foolish self doesn't get out of your body and go into the astral realm and because you're not, pu- you're not purified. You're, not, you're just dirty going out into the world and you're going to pick up more dirt. So sometimes they really get that frustrated with, with you guys. They're like, what are you doing? Like, why can't you just... Why can't you wait? Why can't you just calm down and purify your... Like, just get yourself right first before you do something crazy like that. Like, you're not having any help. You watched American Horror Story, now you think you could astral travel. This is... When it comes to meditation, don't start off with astral traveling right away. Meet your guides first. Uh, constantly talk to... I would talk to an angel, an ascended ancestor, like a really good ancestor. And how do you know if you're talking to an angel during meditation? Like, you can do it in your head. Because this is... Uh, they'll, they'll do it telepathically. You can say it out loud. Like I would recommend uh, you guys talk in your head. And guy, a lot of guides, they can hear some of what you're saying in your head, but I'd recommend if you want to talk to the guide directly, you talk to them out loud. You can talk to them telepathically and they'll send you stuff. So when you close your eyes, and a lot of people have this, I think it's called uh, aphantasia. Aphantasia, I don't know if I'm saying the word right, but aphantasia? Sounds like a person's name, but uh, it's like when you close your eyes and you see darkness, you're, you're actually you're actually not seeing darkness. A lot of people think they have that, but that's a really good sign because that means your your spiritual gifts are going to be pretty easy to open. Some people are seeing colors already, which means you, you opened it and you don't really have anything to open. Like That's literally clairvoyance when it comes to that. So you're clairvoyance. I want everyone to close their eyes right now and tell me what they see. Look into the darkness of your eyelids. Like don't, I mean, look into the darkness of your eyelids. And there's a few ways to meditate. Just focus on the darkness of your eyelids. Don't really look for anything. Look for a particle, look for outlines, look for shapes, look for something you might have seen, and just play around. You'll see fa- cla- uh, blah, blah, blah. you'll see uh, clouds and fog, and just focus on that. And this is one way to meditate every day. This is more of a sub, I mean, uh, I forget the difference between subjective and an ob- objective clairvoyance. I, I mean, it's all the same once you open it. I mean, it's not all the same, but once you open it, then you'll just have different ways to tap into your clairvoyance. This is some. This is a really true way to tap into your clairvoyance. You'll look into the darkness of your eyelids. Uh, I mean, there's different things you could do. I'm not going to teach you this technique. Uh, you can. That's actually not something I'm going to teach. Uh, I don't recommend you use that technique if you find it online. But close your eyes. Look into the d- darkness of your eyelids. See the clouds. Just look at it. Look at it for 30 minutes. Look at it for an hour. It starts turning into other things very quickly. You're going to start seeing faces. And you're going to, I mean, depends on what what, what your angels so, show you. They're going to show you, like, what, one of my angels likes to show me Viking runes, which is interesting, or just different uh, runic patterns. And then he'll have me basically f- figure it out. He'll show me half of, a, half of a Viking rune sometimes and be like, hey, I want to see if he can figure, like, and I'll look up Viking runes online and this is what the Viking rune means. And that's just the message that he was sending me through the Viking rune. Uh... My other angel, I have an angel that sends me down a tunnel when I'm fully, uh, fully, what's it called, in like a euphoric stage. When you're feeling euphoria, you, some of your angels will be able to be like, hey, take my hand, and they'll be like just taking you down tunnels into different, because uh, not every dimension is like this. This is a 3D world dimension, so angels are not really, they have different dimensional properties. So they'll be able to take you down certain dimensions, such as shapes and geometric figures, and especially uh, Metatron can do that, but he's not the angel that you guys know him as online at all. Like, I might make a video just teaching about Metatron. 
Uh, if you ask Metatron for help, be like, hey, Metatron, may I please have some help in this meditation? Can you please help me? And he's literally an angel that is governs, I call him an overseer angel, he's literally an angel that governs people who are trying to consistently learn. And he will help you with that because he's of a different dimensional, uh, different dimensional energy. Metatron is in the background over here. I have a statue over him. Uh, he has a cube and a shape. But like I said, most of the information online about Metatron is just incorrect. He was never a human. No. And he's a very, if you see his energetic form, his, his energetic form is very different. Sometimes uh, he'll give you like certain smells, like he'll smell like lavender or something like that. He'll just pop in and say hi, uh, but he's someone. Who, he's an angel who kind of watches like from far away. He's like, okay, I'm making sure this person's serious, serious, serious. Okay, this person needs a, just needs this little kind of bump in their spiritual journey, and he'll kind of give you a bump, just a quick. Like, uh, he's more of a he's a serious angel. He's one of the more serious angels, but he's not serious in the sense that uh, he's like, oh, I'm gonna be serious. It's like, hey, let's make sure you're serious about your spiritual journey, making sure you're consistent, making sure like just if you're doing everything right, all right, you need a little boost, boop, help boop you up. <laughs> but it's that's a pretty cool way as well. Metatron can give you a little like an extra step. He won't do everything for you, but he'll have definitely help you with that. So that's one way to meditate is close with your close your eyes and just look at the shadows in your eyelids and actually a lot of you will start seeing colors. Once you start seeing colors, oh once you go down the, the color tunnel, because sometimes you guys, once you see one color and you're fully relaxed and you're in a aligned state of mind, you do not get scared when this happens because you'll go into vision mode. Sometimes you guys will will freak out. Your 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 head will turn really hot. Uh, and this happens when you when you guys are act, actively looking for it. And then you just, I mean, actively looking for it, plus your guys are like, okay, hey, let me surprise this person. So you guys guides your angelic guides will surprise you and be like oh, okay let's take this person down a different tunnel and like i said there's different tunnels in meditation spiritual spiritual world is very very open and advanced so you'll close your eyes your whole entire head will get hot uh make sure there's no pain if you're feeling pain in meditation something's very wrong you're not you don't have a being a light around you if you're feeling pain in meditation you clean your space clean your area clean your whole area cleanse if you're feeling headaches or pain during meditation, it means something dark is watching you and is trying to get in. You didn't really take the precautions to get that thing out. Put tourmaline in the room, all over the room. I made videos about that and precautions against that too. But when it comes to meditation, just what you do is just practice different things. Just sit calm. There's a different way of meditation. So maybe if you want to go more into the subconscious mind, which I do a lot, and this can help you really tap and tap into the spiritual realm like deeper into the spiritual realm so right now it's just i'm talking about the surface of just the clairvoyance and seeing darkness in your eyelids and if you can get into a room the quietest room possible or if you have headsets if you want to hear the spiritual realm plug your ears i just gave one of my secrets away if you want to be able to hear your angels very fast plugging your ears will help you hear the sounds of the astral plane so everyone i want you to do this right now You plug your ears and you start hearing vacuums and you're like, what is this? That's the in-between. That's the gap of the spiritual realm. So when spirits are able to talk to you, they have to cross over from their side into the in-between of our side. And we have to kind of cross between the in our side and the in-between their side. And that's the gap. So when you close, when you gap your ears, you're hearing the gap. You're hearing the astral realm. That's the sounds of the spiritual world. Uh, a lot of practices do say that. If you want to tap into the spiritual world, plug your ears. A lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of Eastern practices will teach that. Uh, they don't teach it in the West. I don't really know why, but I just taught it now. So yay, <laughs> that's a really cool way for you to hear your guides. Uh, it it can get freaky. You're gonna start hearing water and bubbles. <sighs> that's a very fast way to hear your angels. I can hear my angel. It's very easy to hear him. But that's one way you can consistently do it, and you'll end up hearing angels just like that. And it sounds weird at first, but it's consistency. The trial is consistency. If you're not consistent, you're not going to achieve it. If you're consistent, then you'll eventually achieve it, because if you ask God, and you're doing good, then it's yours. Ask, and you shall receive. Now, and there's different forms of hearing angels. Some of my angels is, are specific to uh, the inside of my head. Some of them are specific to the outside of my head. 
But same thing with you guys. Some of you might get messages in your head. And let me say this right now, just because you can hear angels, and just because, like, if you can hear angels and spirits in your head and outside of your head with your physical ears, it doesn't mean you should do readings. That's actually a very fast way to lose connection to your angels. And gain connection to something else who does want that. But, yeah, that's, but those are some ways to be able, be able to really tap into meditation. I taught you guys some serious secrets in this video. Now there's the more subconscious aspect to meditation. This one takes a little more... It, this one takes a little more discipline and watching yourself. Now when you close your eyes and meditate, you will go into a half sleep state. And now you're astral. The challenge is to not fall asleep. So most of the time you guys won't fall asleep. You think you're falling asleep, but you've actually achieved a peace of mind of, or a peace of no mind. No, no. Peace of basically, I don't know how to say it, like just a stillness of mind where your thoughts are just, they stop being of this plain entirely and they go to being very astral so you'll feel like you're asleep and one thing that might happen is like you'll, you'll just be sitting here and you can look up at your ceiling and you can look at the ceiling you can look around your walls you start feeling outside of your body you can get up out of your body but that takes practice and you have you actually have to know you guys i'm not going to teach that because if you do it the wrong way you're going to get messed up so i won't teach that meet your spirit guides first and ask what they have to think about you astral traveling ask their advice because different guides will be able to help you with different things. Certain guides won't be able to tackle along with you. Certain guides will. Certain guides will be able to hold your hand and certain things. Certain guides will be like, I really can't do that. You should go to someone who can, you should talk to this guy, guide, etc. It's advanced, but I'm teaching all the specific details. But that's more of the, uh, so you'll go into like a half sleep state. You won't fall fully fall asleep. Sometimes it will feel like you've fallen asleep, but then you'll start unlocking subconscious downloads and Certain things will come to you. I mean, when it happens to me when I do that, uh, and you're gonna, you're going to unlock your astral abilities like that on your own. I'm not gonna teach you how because you'll, it, your guides will teach you how. When you're consistent, and you're asking God for help. Ask God for guidance in your meditations, and you'll learn astral abilities that are not online. It's pretty cool, but this is more of a because everyone has a different gift set. So some people are more spiritual. I mean, gifted. When it comes to astral-like abilities of the higher chakras, some people are more gifted about the lower chakra abilities. And so when it comes to up, up, bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> when it comes to the upper chakras, you're gonna be more able to talk to guides, astral travel, etc. When it comes to the gifts of the lower chakras, you're gonna be able to move energy a lot more easily. You're gonna have more on like more connection to uh, the magnets in the earth and the energy fields. It's this sounds wild. This is one of a more deep in-depth video that I'm willing to share information on because I share this stuff in private with people who I work with to and people who get crystals from me and really want to unlock their gifts, I help them do that. If you'd like your own uh, crystal necklaces, you can get them from floridastoneman.com. I really work with you guys one-on-one -on -one to help you open your gifts and you'll have gifts that are not even online. I'm not gonna say what they are because people's gifts are personal. So, and consistency is key. Consistency is key. Your guys will make sure you're consistent. I've seen angels wait a whole year before talking to someone because they wanted to see, hey, I'm going to see if this person's consistent. I'm like, okay, this person's consistent. Now I can talk to them because um, they're ready. But it's awesome, guys. So if you if you fall asleep during meditation, you might want to get sleep before your meditation or make sure you've cleared, you've cleared your space correctly because if you're falling asleep every single time you meditate and you're not trying to fight going to sleep and you know it's not a half sleep state and it's like a full blown nap and you're like, uh, I mean, sometimes that does happen, but it's happening if it happens every single time and you have a bad feeling about it versus, hey, I'm tired or that means that something dark is putting you to sleep. It's the kind of like, mm, yeah, just put the kind of and blocking you. So cleanse yourself. Absolutely. Oh, it's 11.11. Wow. Okay. This video is ending at 11.11. If you guys have any questions, ask them in the comments section. This is a really in-depth video. Meditation is a lot easier than you guys think. The hard part's the consistency. People are not consistent when it comes to meditation. They meditate for about a week and they're like, I give up. Your gifts don't get unlocked in one week. Sometimes they do, but... Even if all of your gifts opened in one week, that'd be too overwhelming. Your guides wouldn't do that to you. People who go on the route of darkness and uh, bid for their gifts to open, it unlocks all at once, and it's something that doesn't stay. 
when you do this consistently, you have gifts that stay and you know how to tap into them. And any questions, ask them in the comments section. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Ciao!